hi there, I'm uh, Matt Bird. I'm the Director of Quality Compliance and Training for TalkTalk Talk Group. Um, today I'm going to be talking about a bit of the TalkTalk Talk journey and specifically around uh, speech analytics. So we started off in a complete world of necessity. This wasn't a uh, strategic plan, this wasn't something that we wanted to do. Um, we were in a position we had to do something. And we had to measure progress, um, or externally with Ofcom we had to measure it in weeks, and therefore internally we had to actually measure progress in days. And you can't do that from all the hygiene things that had to be done. So we, we actually worked with the partner to actually introduce voice analytics. We got all of the actual calls loaded dynamically into that. It was uh, cloud-based, so we didn't have to actually build anything, deploy anything. We didn't have to worry about long periods of um, sort of call recordings being you know, with, uh, held. We could actually focus on the, that day, get all the calls in there and do analysis on those. Um, I'm going to go through some of the benefits and activities as we go forward. Um, the result of that, with a matter of... Um, We'll call, it, call it weeks, short numbers of months. We actually went through, not only actually identified the problems, fixed the problems, but satisfied the regulator and actually finished that investigation with no further action. And that was purely down to the fact that we'd actually used technologies to help us get out of that hole. That bought us the time then to do all the more hygiene things that we've actually now gone through and we're in a significantly better place now. So what did we get or what do we get now in terms of that platform we have got in place? So the uh, speech analytics, actually text, text analytics as well, but we're actually, um, everything up to now has been focused on the voice um, side of things. We have all of our sales, collections, support calls, any kind of voice interaction we have with the customer is loaded into the platform um, automatically daily with all the right metadata into it as well. So we've got over 10,000 hours of call recordings a day, every single day, and we store those for 13 months. That allows me to actually search and go across all of those. So there's two types of efficiency that we've actually got out of this. One is that that independent core listening team now have a platform, of course all the different partners we have, they can got one interface to it. They can actually find the calls that they want to listen to based on that random sampling and actually go through the activities in a very efficient way. In fact, compared to where we were with different call recording systems, different ways of retrieving calls and going through, just using the speech analytics platform we've got about 37% efficiency and actually having it in place. So that for them, it means I can actually either listen to more calls or I can reduce headcount. We've actually chosen to actually go for more calls and go deeper and higher sample sizes. Um, the second efficiency is actually for other parts of the business. So the function owners, the product owners, they can actually, go, you know, very often they'll come to my team, my analytics team and say, okay, what's going on here? And nowadays the answer is, well, go and, go and have a listen. Go, in, go into the speech analytics platform. They're all tagged, the type of calls you want to listen to. You can find the calls. You don't have to go and search for them. They are just there. They're listed for you. They find the call they want to listen to, and most importantly, they can go straight to the relevant part of the call. They don't have to listen to the entire call and go through. They don't have to listen to the whole time. So that means that they can actually listen to the very calls they want to, the very part they want to listen to, which means they can listen to a, a far greater number of them, and therefore they're not actually dependent on my team. So they don't have to, I don't have to have this huge team serving the rest of the business. I've actually used technology to actually help them go through. Needle in the haystack. I, mean, I don't know, I'm sure you have the same sort of challenges, but very often we're just looking for those 10 calls. Out of the thousands and thousands of calls you make and receive every single week, you're looking for the 10 that are going to go really wrong. You may know what they are, but how do you find them? You call listening, you've got a statistical relevant sample, but are you going to find those 10? Probably not. But what we're able to do, because every single call is in there, we can actually search for the, uh, the item you're looking for, the keywords that you're going to get, uh, the phrases, a uh, combination of actual words or key, you know, key phrases, and we can actually pull them straight in and find the 10 calls. And we can do that in real time. Third kind of main benefit we've actually gone through is actually we're using it for coaching. Interestingly, we didn't start this, well, we started our journey with a compliance centric um, sort of angle, but where we started using coaching was actually more in the sales world. So actually having the platform in place, having the call recordings in there, we know what a good agent does. We've listened to the calls, we've profiled it, we've set up automatic queries that allow us to recognise. Rather than call listening, which is again sample based, you'll never get the, t the team big enough to listen to enough calls to actually work through. Whereas using technology to do that, you're able to actually listen to 100% of the calls. They're automatically tagged. The team leader has access. They come in in the morning, they can see what are the phrases that you wanted to actually listen to, what are the rebuttals, what are the activities. How do you bring those up to the team leader and then directly coach? And again, you get that efficiency coming through as well. You don't have to listen to the entire call. You don't have to spend time retrieving the call. Click a button. There's the call. There's the relevant bit. Coaching done. Move on. So we actually did that in the sales world and we actually focused on sales conversion. So in the pilot that we ran through and we've now fully rolled out, we were able to turn two underperforming teams into above average teams. 
Doesn't sound like much, but it's a one-off investment. It's a one-off investment to put it in place and then you can pretty much stand away. The team leader does the coaching. They have the access, it comes out. You've got 100% coverage across all of the agents. So we've, we've used that for both in the sales world now. We actually use it in retentions. In retentions, in terms of our on-the-day save rate, we've actually increased by 10 points just using this methodology versus normal coaching methods and normal activities. So most, anyone who has any kind of scale, the challenges are about how do you get consistency? How do you get consistency in all of the agents to deliver exactly what you want all the time? You can use the insight to tell you what's good. You can build the queries and then use it with directly then coaching. We're using it in our service center as well in terms of actual call, call structure and actually objection handling, other, other items. You've got to keep reinvesting in those queries, but once you do it, you invest once, you get the benefit ongoing. The other one is trend analysis. So, I don't know if BT is still in the room. It might be a good one to use as an example. So, I, I can look in. We know that the um, telecoms market, um, BT Sport, it's a very, very big thing. You know, we, we have TV now. Um, we're very interested in that. We don't want to lose customers. We want to gain customers. It's a very sort of active uh, element in the marketplace. But because I've got all the core recordings in there, at any point I can go in and I can go, well, how often is BT Sport being mentioned? How, is it being, how often is it being mentioned in the sales channel versus the retention channel? I can understand that. And not only can I actually understand what it is, because it's, because it's in there, I can actually go backwards in time. I've got 13 months of call recordings of any mention of anything I want to go through. I can look at what it is and I can trend it. I can look at the daily trend, weekly trend. I can see how it's trending in different functions. I've not had to listen to a single call. Just literally by typing in the search term I want to track, I can go through. Everything that we invest and go through in our queries comes through and back onto all these. So I, I'm, I should have opened up with this really. That the third thing you should know about me is that I'm lazy. I don't mean that I actually can't be bothered to get up in the morning or anything like that. I actually mean that I much prefer to put investment up front. I like investment in front. I like to create efficient machines, simple, simple efficient machines. I don't want to put 10 units of energy in and then I have 10 units out and I have to do the same thing tomorrow. That's totally inefficient. I want to really focus on, I don't mind putting a thousand units up front, building the platform, understanding the queries, writing them, go that type of activity, the machine we build in terms of actually how it works, close feedback and working through. That means I put a big investment up front, but I put next to nothing in on a daily, weekly basis and I get full benefit going on. So I absolutely, am, I'm very, very lazy. Um, tell my boss that if you like, um, but it's because I believe in efficient machines. So those are kind of the benefits that we've, I've just tried to summarize and go as quickly as I can. I'd like to try to go over some questions and go through. Um, these are the five things that I think you should know about this. Um, the first one really is don't create a big centralized team that hog onto all that information and data. It's not efficient. You'll never be able to scale to meet the demand. Actually empower the functions themselves to be users. So within TalkTalk, Talk, we, we've got about um, 2,500 employees. Um, that's tiny, absolutely tiny. I think probably our nearest sort of scale competitor is probably about 10 times that. Um, but on that, 500 people have got um, access to the platform, the voice, uh, speech analytics platform. What I've done is so like giving them permission, seeing their own uh, data, means they can self-serve. We do actually centralize the query writing because we have a control point, but other than that, we're actually giving it out to as many people as possible. This comes back into the governance. We, you know, we started off in a compliance-only um, sort of need. In a compliance-only need, it's very, very simple, very, very focused. One bit of insight drives the next sort of bit of work you do and it on goes until you get conclusion. Well, actually now, because I support every single touch point in the business, whether it's an engineer, um, the call center, web chat, no, but no matter what it is, um, it's very, very wide, which means I've got a lot of internal customers. So we need a, a governance that works through. So rather than, um, rather than making it a free-for-all, rather than making it on a per-project assessment basis, we've put a quite a strict governance in place. So what we do is we manage the, um, we, we work on a sprint basis, so manage the mini projects. We say each sprint is a two weeks long. We can manage two, two sprints at any one moment in time. We've got two teams working through. That way we end up with a calendar that's very fixed. Everyone knows that when a request comes in, where the spaces are, and they can reserve slots, but they know how big a slot is. And you have to keep reinvesting in those queries. You can't just sort of, it's not invest once and it gives you everything you want. You've got to keep on top of them. Um, so keep them short, keep them actionable. Um, make sure you get the right senior level of sponsorship as well. It's very, very easy in our very early days once we started actually productizing this, is that too many junior people wanted something. It's absolutely important to them, but in the scale of everything, it didn't work. So get that real senior sponsorship that works through. So I've got three main, um, sort of my peers in terms of directors, that basically have to sponsor every single sprint we do, and that covers the end-to-end. -end. Um, 
The other part as well is that for very analysis is, is, is really important. It's absolutely critical. But very often within TalkTalk, Talk, before we had this kind of platform in place, we'd spend half the meeting talking about the data itself, not about the actual action you want to take on the back of it. So we've actually shifted a lot now with this one because you get 100% coverage. This is not a sample, you're not arguing over sample sizes, it's 100%. It's technology, it's automatic, it's daily. It comes through. The credibility that comes with that means that you go straight to talking about the insight. In fact, my challenge now is very much is that a lot of the other analysis that gets done, they look at it and go, that's interesting, but what does Nexidia say? What does the platform say that actually drives this? So it's, it becomes a <laughs> work, um, for work um, comes in greater than we can actually manage and work through. Um, again, integrity, I've just mentioned that really. So the actual integrity is built in. You don't have to justify it. It actually is there from day one across everything. Um, we talked about sort of no single quality um, measure as such. Um, any object you want to measure the quality of, you've got to have that different angles and perspectives. There is no such thing as one KPI that you can just rally behind or make all the difference. It doesn't exist. So we do use that customer feedback. So we have an outside-in subjective measure. We have the call listening still. Um, so I have a smaller team, but I have about 70 agents just doing call listening. It's about 6,000 listens a week that we go through. Um, they use the platform to actually get the deficiencies that come through with that. Um, we're actually evolving that even further that a lot of the stuff they're listening for, we're writing into the queries. So that actually what they end up doing then is listening to the exceptions, not the actual whole. So we, you've got to have those two different subjective inside out, outside in measures. And then we actually look at consequence. So my analysis team will look at join up all of that one, go through the entire journey type aspect. You've got to get as much of that information back into the platform. You've got to put it into the metadata. And that's actually one of our challenges. The technology we use could take a real-time feed from the switches. But without that metadata, you're not really getting the potential out of the data. Um, and the last one really is, and next city will hate me for saying this one really, that the actual value is not in the platform. It's not in the technology you buy. The actual real premium sort of benefit you get is the investment you make in the queries. So if you don't invest in it, you're not going to get the benefit at all. If you, if you, the intellectual sort of um, benefit is absolutely in the way that you actually think about what you want to do with it and how you go uh, invest into those there and revisit them. Obviously, you've got to have a good platform in the first place. So those, that's, it's very quick. I want to try and maybe go to like a more question sort of side. But the, I could talk quite happily about lots of other parts of the framework that we have in place. Today was really about the speech analytics side of things. Our journey going forward is more about how we um, continue working on our CRM type strategies and how we join up even more of our sort of unstructured data um, into a you know, consistent whole. And we've got probably about seven minutes, so if you're okay, Matt, to take some questions? Absolutely wonderful. Yeah, if I can ask the first question. Of course. How come somebody with the word compliance in their title has got so much energy and personality? <laughs> yeah. It's because I focus on quality. I, I, I genuinely care. I mean, I, I quite often, you talk to me about, who, you know, do you admit that, you know, who, what you know, industry or what company you work for? In 2011, I didn't say I worked for TalkTalk. Talk. I, I, was, I was ashamed of it. I was ashamed of where it was. You know, yeah. There's a lot of people that really do care in the, in the business. We just don't often see compliance or someone that's got compliance in the title with so much passion and energy. <laughs> um, so, okay. uh, questions, please. Uh, my name's Gary Kinsella. I'm an independent contractor. I'm working for a, a big financial services company over in East Anglia. I've been to see another office in Europe that they, they're part of as well that have got speech analytics. The big part that they sort of shared with me was your final point about it's only as good as what you put in. They reckon as a start off, you probably need to spend at least a good couple of months to, to get really a good catalogue of queries yeah. before you get quality data. Is that right? I agree, yeah. And you can, you can, you can, there's no such thing as a fast track. You've got to focus on particular areas. So, you know, some, some of the actual um, the initial query groups that we, we wrote were focusing on just one area. Yep. And actually, and I hate this, I hate this from an analytics perspective, I hate interesting. It's, it's interesting, it's expensive, it runs through, you point at stuff, lots of slides, you've got 80-page slide pack, brilliant, it's interesting. So what? Mm. It has to be actionable. Unfortunately, with this, you have to start with interesting to then build on that before you get to actionable. And I'd probably say that, um, yeah, three months, probably for the first point, if you're yeah. focused, to actually, before you actually start getting real benefit. Yeah. So how, how do you keep your lovely fi financial directors away who want the return on investment yesterday? It's a good one. So I think I, I had that challenge probably for the first six months that we went through. 
And it's only when you start seeing the benefit and the robustness. I always work on the principle that insight, the, the less you get of it, if you have like one page mm -hmm. or even one sentence or one, one phrase, that's the most difficult to attain if it's the right one yeah. and the most expensive. And it's disproportionate from what goes through. And that's kind of where we were starting from here is it's not, we're not giving you this 80 page in graphs and of course yep. it's all available if you want it. It's actually giving you that very one thing that you need to do. We get some efficiencies we come through as well, work mm -hmm. through. And I think we're only still now only getting probably about 20 to 30% of the um, benefit we could get from the platform. Yep. And it's about how you drive it and work through. So for the first six months, it was hard. It was a tough sort of sell internally. Yep. It's a big investment. Yep. It probably makes up about a quarter of my total budget just in this platform alone. Mm. Um, but it's, um, it, it gets easier. It gets a, it's a lot easier when you start seeing it and the robustness. Yeah. And actually, now the, I, I meet with the exec every single week, and it, you know, very often they'll have gone to another meeting, come in and go, great, can you just get a next city you want to do this one? Because it kind of it becomes the de facto. Mm -hmm. And so when, once it becomes the de facto, that they stop challenging yep. the cost completely. Yeah. So it's, it's the integrity, I think, that actually will, will win okay. the way. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Hi, Matt. I just wonder what the most powerful change that you've implemented on the back of implementing analytics has been. I think it's probably the more cultural change of how we use data and how we take actions on the back of it. For too often within Talk Talk, we would um, we'd make big, huge decisions on the you've just got to believe um, type approach, um, which I, I certainly get you know, frustrated with. It has to be, in my mind, actually based on some kind of insight and direction. Of course, the benefits we've talked through in terms of efficiencies. So the, it does pay for itself and work through, so that's, that's good. So that keeps the finance, you know, the people, you know, the accountants happy. Um, when it gets so embedded into the DNA and works through, so the increased sales conversion rate, the increased retention um, rates is absolutely amazing. And that, so I think probably, it's probably when you start using the coaching out of everything. Because I could do a lot of the insight work without speech analytics. It just takes a lot longer. And it's a, it's a lot more resource intensive. Um, this allows you to do more in a, very, you know, in a very focused sort of way and multiple parallel bits. Thank and it's you. kind of a woolly answer, but it, there's multiple benefits, really. Okay, I think, uh, I think we're about up. Thank you very, very much. Okay, thank you. Everyone. Cheers, Matt. Thank you.